looking for their first win in the conference. Pitt at just one and five, so it should be a pretty close matchup right now at Pittsburgh. Let's head out to Tim Brando and Clark Kellogg standing by Pittsburgh, PA. Gentlemen. Thank you, John, and welcome live to Fitzgerald Fieldhouse in Steeltown. And two teams that are in search of, in search of momentum in February as they've had dismal January. Hello again and welcome, everyone, to Big East Basketball on this ACC Big East Wednesday. I'm Tim Brando. The Boston College Eagles are just in search of a victory. They'd like to log a Big East win. The Pitt Panthers, on the other hand, may be the best 7-10 and 10 team in this decade. Of course, it's early in the 90s, but there's no question they're an outstanding team. By my side is Clark Kellogg, and when we say outstanding, we do mean that. They handled Arizona, beat them in a non-conference game, lost a number of close games. They really have. In their last eight games, seven of those games have been against top 25 competition. Georgia Tech and Arizona, the only two teams not in the Big East Conference. Arizona ranked 24th right now, but they were 19th on Saturday when the Panthers handed them that loss. If patience is a virtue, then certainly patience is something that Boston College must have with its administration, with head coach Jim O'Brien. Well, you have to feel for him coming in here, a club that has not won. They have a dubious distinction. If they lose, they could have the most consecutive losses in Big East history. Can you make any parallels where Jim O'Brien's concerned? Well, right here in the conference, P.J. Carlissimo comes to mind. He was on the hot seat, almost booted, but they stayed with him. They were patient. He was able to turn that Seton Hall program around. They got to the final championship game a year ago, and now he's got a solid program headed in the right direction. Patience sometimes is something that's hard to come by, but hopefully that'll be the case with Jim O'Brien and Boston College. As a matter of fact, over in the ACC, you can make a case for Bobby Crimmins and Mike Krzyzewski. Exactly, Tim. Both of those play, both of those coaches rather had to struggle with young teams, but once you get a couple of good, solid players, then it kind of mushrooms into a positive, solid program. Matchup-wise, when you start talking about the Panthers, as always, the game has to be won down on the blocks where Special K used to play. <laughs> Brian Shorter is their main guy in the low post area. A 2010 guy, we call him in the business. 20 points a game, averages just under 10 boards a game, gets to the free throw line 11 times a game, really does a great job in the low post. The Boston College Eagles, known in the past for having outstanding guard play, of course, Dana Barris is gone. But it will be the guard play that's pivotal to them tonight. Well, again, Boston College struggling to find an identity. They'll start three guards in the backcourt tonight. Leo Arditti, Brian Edwards, and Bobby Moran. Of those three, Edwards and Arditti, the more capable perimeter shooters, look for them to fire up the three-pointer early and often. A couple of weeks ago, we had BC against Georgetown. They did not shoot well early. They must, again tonight, get out of the gates. They've got to score points. They've got to get off to a good start, and the one way they can do that is to knock down the perimeter jump shot. It's the Eagles and the Panthers, game two on ACC. Big East Wednesday, we'll be back with the starting lineups. The Eagles and the Panthers from Steel Town. I said, put on some steaks and get the queen a Bud Light. Oh. <laughs> Bud Light's clean, fresh taste won't fill you up, never lets you down. Henry, they're pop tops. Everything else oh. is just a light. Sheila! Do you know, Sheila? I was all wrong. We belong together. I know. So let's get married. Buy a big house? Sure, we're going to hit it big, kid. Stocks, bonds. We're on our way to Rainbow City. In the movies, happy endings are easy. But in the real world, they take solid planning. So for investment advice, peace of mind, even buying or selling a home, come to the companies of the Prudential and build your future on the rock. Tickets for web. We interrupt this purchase for a reminder. Here we go. There's another decision worth entertaining. Smart. Choosing a card that actually pays you cash. Cash back for every charge. The Discover card.
it pays to discover the card that pays you back. Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, a building that's been awfully kind to the Panthers over the years. That's the site of the Panthers and the Eagles tonight on this ACC Big East Wednesday. 6,000 plus have filed in for this game. Very important for the Panthers as they try to build momentum in the month of February as a threat to many Big East teams in the spoilers role as well as the potential to make the big dance, although they are sitting 7-10 and 10 at this point. Jim O'Brien, of course, going through some difficult times both with his club and with his his personal life and you see there 0 and 8 this month losing to Georgetown and St. John's twice Syracuse Notre Dame Seton Hall and Providence and his wife Christine has gone through open heart surgery a pair of times this is a man that's been through a great deal in the month of January been one of those rocks in the roadway of life and great to hear that Christine is doing fine recovering well actually attended a Boston College game recently so that part of the situation seems to be going well now on the floor is where Jim O'Brien places his concern. Yeah, at, at times he had difficulty just making it to shoot arounds before the game as he stayed in Boston College in Boston as long as he possibly could. We're ready now for the starting lineups tonight and with them PA announcer Clayton Hartman. And now the starting lineup for tonight's Big East basketball game. First, the guards for Boston College, a 6'3 junior from Queens, New York. Number 30, Bobby Moran. For Pitt, a 6'4 junior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Number 20, Darrell Porter. For Boston College, a 6'2 sophomore from Dorchester, Massachusetts. Number 15, Brian Edwards. For Pitt, a 6'3 junior from Los Angeles, California, number 22, Jason Matthews. And now the forwards for Boston College, a 6'5 junior from Baltimore, Maryland, number 35, Doug Abel. For Pitt, a 6'10 sophomore from Stevenson, Washington, number 33, Darren Morningstar. For Boston College, a 6'3 freshman from Herzliya, Israel, number 14, Lior Ardini. For Pitt, a 6'6 junior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, double zero, Brian Shorter. And the centers for Boston College, a 6'11 freshman from Newburgh, Indiana, number 44, David Hinton. And for Pitt, a 6'9 junior from Atlantic City, New Jersey, number 55, Bobby Martin. The Eagles are coached by Jim O'Brien and coaching our Pitt Panthers. And celebrating his birthday tonight, Paul Evans. <laughs> Paul Evans, hey coach, we got it out during halftime of the first game. He is 45 years old, and those candles keep growing. And the percussion section will let him know as well. January 31, he's an Aquarian. Wonder if he took a look at the horoscope today. The Panthers and the Eagles are on the way. Could it be in the stars for the Paul Evans? We'll soon find out. Get ready for a special Sports Illustrated sneak preview. It's unreal. The man, it's like he's from another planet. You never know what he's going to do. He doesn't even know. He just does it, and you're like, duh. They just saw an amazing video cassette presented by Sports Illustrated, starring the most exciting figure in sports today. Who else? Jordan. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Michael Jordan, come fly with me 1990. Over 40 minutes of the game's ultimate playmaker. Yours free with your paid subscription to SI. Yes! Call toll-free and get 26 issues of SI at over 45% off the cover price. I didn't realize you could save that much. Including SI's blockbuster baseball preview, the giant 35th anniversary covers issue, and the red hot swimsuit issue. So what's the catch? No catch. You get it all for just three monthly installments of $12.97 each. Even use your credit card. Golden. Let's do it. Save over 45% and get the Jordan video free. You're going to be giving away a lot of these babies starting right here. Boston College, 6 and 12. You see the terrible numbers for Jim O'Brien. And then Pittsburgh, as we mentioned, eight straight at Fitzgerald. They lead the Big East in three pointers. As a matter of fact, statistically, Pitt, one of the better teams in this league. Jason Matthews, of course, 
42% from three-point range. And you see there, five of six against Arizona on Saturday. Gene Monty, Rick Hartzell, and Donnie Gray are officials. And the toss control to BC. And it will quickly go back to pitch. Turned over by Bobby Moran as he hit the deck. Students are on their feet as they always are before the first hoop here at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Quickly the backcourt of Edwards all over Darrell Porter. Remember, he is an off guard moving to the point this year because of the loss to injury of Sean Miller. Bobby Martin, 2 nothing Panthers. And as we mentioned, Darrell Porter making the transition. He's of only a few assists away from breaking the all-time assist mark in a single season at Pittsburgh. There's a rejection by Martin. Abel's shot won't fall. Saved by Porter out to Matthews. Knocked away by Edwards. And it goes back to Pittsburgh. Bobby Martin leads this club in block shots with 21 on the season. Can be an intimidator inside as he was on that possession. Look for BC to play a soft, fluffing man-to-man. -man. They'll put a lot of pressure on the ball, but they'll try to sit in Shorter's lap and double him when he catches it down in the paint. Out of bounds, Leo R. Diddy coming in there to give some help on Brian Shorter on the blocks. Morning Star, a surprise starter for the Panthers. He usually comes in off the pond. Paul Evans choosing to start him tonight. Edwards for three. Edwards follows. There'll be some long rebounds if the Eagles look for that three-point shot off. Them. Abel. It won't fall as Moran tried to knock it down. Matthews for three. Jason Matthews, six for his last seven from three-point range. In his last four games, 59% from behind the arc. Excellent perimeter shooter. Really has added to his game in that he's using the perimeter shot to set up his drive as well. David Hinton out to our ditty. And it won't fall. Remember, we mentioned Boston College must get out quickly. So far, the scenario not good for Jim O'Brien and staff. They've gotten some decent shots too, Tim. They've got some pretty good shots. They need to get those down. Shorter. Too strong. Moran loses it. Last touch by Morningstar, and Boston College gets it back. Not unlike what we saw in Landover a couple of weeks ago. Good shot selection. They just wouldn't fall against the Hoyas. The selection of the shot just half the equation. Arditti, 0 for 2 from that spot. And it's corralled by Bobby Martin. This puts a lot of pressure on BC's defense now. They've gotten some good shots, haven't gotten them down. Now they're going to have to stop the Panthers from jumping out to a big early lead. Jason Matthews lost it. Leo Arditti knocked it away. He's a player I know you're high on, Arditti. Arditti, in much the same way as Nadav Hennefeld for UConn, plays the game with a lot of savvy, good perimeter shooter. Matthews. This guy isn't too bad from the perimeter either. Eight nothing, and Jason has six with a pair of trades. Panthers in his own defense now. They'll show a lot of different defenses. Knocked away by Morningstar. Porter settling in at that point position. Calls for Matthews. The penetration. Our Diddy gets it. And now BC looking to run. Leor with a solo. He took step. Oh, I don't know about that. Looked like a pretty good move by our Diddy. He certainly doesn't agree with the call. I think I'm on his side. Here we get a look at it right at you. Maybe he did take a little bunny rabbit hop in there after he picked the ball up. A lot of players, though, with a better image and a bigger reputation might have gotten away with it. <laughs> good camera work that time. There's a foul. Moran down low, picking it up. Uh, you better get you better get in Matthews' face, and you see Pittsburgh a thousand percent if you add an extra zero there. Boston College and Ofer early on. 
just what they could ill afford this type of start pitches you, you, you were wondering whether they would come out lethargically yeah, they've answered the bell haven't they they certainly have Abel gets the foul against Bobby Martin. This is just the kind of game that historically the Panthers would not play well in. You recall last year, four teams in the top five they knocked off, yet they would lose to teams like a Duquesne. This year, of course, they lost to Toledo in the wake of their one-point loss to Georgia Tech. That in itself, early in the season, in the ACC Big East Challenge, that could have been the difference in a 12-5 and five team versus a 7-10 and 10 team that we see right now. Excellent point. And the Panthers realizing that if they're going to make a run for the March Madness, they're going to have to beat teams that they're supposed to beat and also upset some squads. They've got the talent to do that. They get Georgetown a week from tonight in Landover in a game you'll see on ACC Big East Tuesday. Nine nothing, the Panthers. Three and a half gone. Pitch it, defensive pressure really picking up. And the Eagles are a little lazy with their passes now. They're going to have to use some ball fake. Actually, they're throwing it right into the hands of the Panther defender. Hinton, that's his spot. David Hinton, the first Hoosier ever to sign with Boston College out of Newburgh, Indiana, and Castle High School. Finally gets the Eagles into the scoring column. It's 9-2. Hinton coming off a career performance. Uh, Denny now picks up a foul. That was needless. He gets the technical, a push. And Jim O'Brien will argue the point. We're going to take a look at it. Here's the reach in foul on Edwards. And the technical foul. And then just a little love tap here, which is really meaningless. Technical, a little strong there. Yeah, and, the, and it comes on this on a retaliation again because our Diddy felt that elbow. That felt was that not, chicken yeah, wing. And he, felt that was, wing. Absolutely. And it was not flagrant, but he felt it and he wanted to let Shorter know and he picks up the technical. Really one that could have gone uncalled in practice. In theory, mm -hmm. yes, but. In many a Big East game, we've seen far more than that without a technical foul call. You're correct. And you can mark these up in your scorebook. This guy, an 88% free thrower. Oh, these are the things, though, Clark, that happen to you when you're 0-8 in any league. That's exactly right. The fact that it continues to snowball in a negative manner. All the little breaks seem to go against you. You get caught, and the opposition doesn't. 10-2 our score, four minutes gone from Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Tim Randall, Clark Kellogg, happy you joined us. Morningstar picked up his feet. And we've got a timeout. It's been all Panthers early, 10-2 on Paul Evans' birthday. Foul is called on uh, Brian Shorter. Sporty Suzuki Sidekick. Hard top and soft top. Tough 4x4s with features to make you comfortable, like fully carpeted interiors, reclining rear seats, and electronically adjustable mirrors. So what could we do to make the Sidekick more attractive? Offer dealer cash incentives. Up to $3,000. But hurry, this deal won't be around for long. Call now for the Suzuki dealer nearest you. our future we invite you to learn the technology of tomorrow while you serve your country in the navy of today it's been all pittsburgh they're up by eight jason matthews off to an excellent start doing what he does best knocking down the perimeter jump shot from behind the arc. Here he gets one of his two early three-pointers. 
Boy, he's got a pretty shot. Excellent follow through and release. Look at that now. Shorter leading in scoring. Matthews in three point efficiency. Porter in assist, yet they're seven and ten, and only one win in Big East play. That's hard to figure. Well, that's why coaches don't put a lot of weight in statistics. They look at those W and L's, and clearly Pittsburgh, a team with some talented, talented players, as they show some full court pressure now. Moran in trouble. Nice by Abel. Numbers, and Abel puts it down. Tried to get the foul for Morningstar in doing so. What made that happen was the diagonal look. Anytime you're pressured full court, you want to look diagonally. Have a stoppage of play, perhaps a contact loss. It appears that way. Donnie Gray will begin looking for it as they go in search of it, belonging to Bobby Moran. And the trainers now will take a look as well. 15:32 remaining. Well, this has got to be, as a player, I know you remember this. How <laughs> difficult is it to find a small, invisible contact on the hardwood? <laughs> it's virtually impossible. I had a tooth knocked out once. I can tell you that was much easier to find than, than a contact, but they seems like they found it. It was actually in his eye. Mm -hmm. That's a heck of a place for it to get lost. Although those contacts can roll up into the top of your eye and move around up there. Paul Evans, the 67 graduate of Ithaca College. Most successful at the Naval Academy. You know, he's kind of like the Gene Cady mm -hmm. of the Big East in that he rarely gives you a smile. He's always got that game face or game style. He, he managed to smile when he saw the cake, though. He managed one. Boy, they really collapse on Shorter, don't they? Matthews shot won't fall. Three men around Shorter. And the foul on Hinton going up the back of Morningstar. We talked about Boston College needing to shoot the ball well from the perimeter. They're also going to have to compete on the backboard. And when you send two or three people at a guy like Shorter, they did a good job there getting a hand on the pass. But now he's able to work on the offensive line. And Matthews continues as we come back to live action with yet another three-pointer. He has 10. It's 13-4 Pittsburgh. The three-point shot available for Matthews again because Shorter is such a concern inside. Martin with the steal, and Darrell Porter leads the break. Back to Martin. He got it a bit late. And missed the chippy. Abel baseline extended. Hinton follows. Matthews retrieves, and the Panthers on the run again. Darrell Porter. Rebound cleared to Michael Reese, who just clocked into the game, along with Walter Lundy, number 32 in the room, for the Boston College Eagles. Lundy now up at the point. Reese with the entry pass. Well, that brings back memories. Abel picks up the foul. The old Tom Davis bounce pass to the post. You see that in a lot of different places. Gary Williams wow. teaches it. Rick Pitino also teaches it. Excellent way to enter the ball into the low post. And Doug Abel, despite his lack of size, only going about 6'5", able to get inside and draw the foul. BC, well, you see the slippage there in Big East play. You come in with six victories prior to the Big East season, and then all of a sudden the reality sets in in the month of January. Very strong defensive clubs in the Big East, Georgetown and UConn, as well as Villanova. A youthful team, Doug Abel is one of the more mature players on this club. A lot's expected from him. We had a lane violation against Reese. Doesn't matter because Abel did not convert. 13 to four, six minutes of a lap. Porter to Martin. Hello. And the foul. Martin looks like he's shaking up a bit here. Extended tremendously on that. On that dunk, too much rim on that wing. I think he may have clipped himself. Exactly. It looks like he's going to be okay. Nice transition action here. Porter able to see Martin, Martin streaking on the right side. And that's a big time flush, Brando. <laughs> Ooh, a different angle here. There's the foul all over his shoulder and face is Michael Reese. 
And Martin, with great strength, able to finish. Fourth in the Big East in rebounding. Finally beginning to realize his potential. So much expected from him. And it's lost out of bounds by BC again. Uh, yet another turnover. And it's 15 to 4 already. Rod Brooking comes in. Crowd loves Big Rod as Bobby Martin checks out. Rod Brooking, he certainly doesn't look the part of a basketball player. But his game certainly fits. Averaging just under 14 points a game. Ah! Shorter, hacked from the backside. Reese picking it up. This second foul since coming into the game. Pittsburgh may go to the line a great deal because it's apparent Jim O'Brien will not allow shots in the paint. He would rather send the Panthers to the line. Well, he's going to sag in on Brian Shorter, the guy the Panthers look to in the post-up situation more than anybody else. Again, I mentioned at the top, he's gotten to the line. An average of 11 times per outing. One. Ready? Really? Big East Rookie of the Year last year. A runaway choice, and he's quietly gone about these numbers this year. Not really noticed. As a matter of fact, most, most people say he's having a down year. Well, the last six or seven games, he's really made the adjustment to not having Sean Miller around, the guy who served him the basketball in excellent position a lot of times a year ago. BC in desperate need of perimeter shots, and they have not been falling. There's Edwards for three. The iron unkind, and the foul against Morningstar as Abel comes up with the rebound. Oh, that's a big league rebound. Excellent timing and quickness after the basketball. And again, here's a good shot by Edwards. These are the shots they're going to have to get. Abel doing a nice job to get to the offensive glass. Morningstar with his second personal. Lundy tries for three. An air ball, and Brooklyn gets it. Jason Matthews driving the baseline, rejected by Abel. Willie Foley has come into the game as well, number 50 for BC. Down on the blocks there with Morningstar and Rod Brooklyn bodying up. Panthers in, the, in an active zone defense here. Really making it tough for BC to get the ball anywhere near inside. Lundy with another air ball, and Reese follows. As good as a pass, really, as Michael Reese picked it up and knocked it in. 16 to 6. So far, BC ugly from outside. Two air balls and two trips. Foul away from the ball, and again it's Morningstar, his third. Leor Arditti, number 14, coming back into the game for Boston College. All the backcourt scoring with the Panthers, and as we touched on at the top of the telecast, that could not be the case for Jim O'Brien's club. That's why they have the 10-point hole. The Eagles have to get that goose egg out of the backcourt scoring column. Abel losing it out of bounds, as touched by Brookings. And it will be triggered in by Brian Edwards. And really because of the nature of the Panthers' zone, the outside shot is making itself available for the Eagles. They just have to settle down and knock them down. You notice how O'Brien got our Diddy out of the game after he picked up that technical to settle him down? Settle him down, cool him off, chill him out a little bit. Shot clock down to 10. Abel puts it in. Well, they're having a little success. That time, a nice bounce pass into Abel, who was patient in getting the shot off. 16 to 8. And the crowd has grown quiet. DC has stayed primarily man to man. Brooking way too strong. Out of bounds. Last touch by Foley, and Pitt will hang on. They lead by eight, 11.35 remaining. Well, they, they're not quite when they're on camera, are they? With the manufacturer's suggested retail price of only $63.99, more front seat headroom than a Mercedes, better gas mileage than any VW, 
and more front seat legroom than a Rolls Royce, what could we possibly do to make this Suzuki Swift more attractive? Offer dealer cash incentives, up to $400. But hurry, this deal won't be around for long. Call now for the Suzuki dealer nearest you. Cash or charge? We interrupt this purchase for a reminder. I've got to have it. There's still one more place to comparison shop. I don't know where to start. Here, by choosing the card that actually pays you cash. Cash back for every charge. The Discover card. <laughs> That's the one. It's perfect. It pays to discover the card that pays you back. ESPN is your ticket to Sunday night NFL when the best from the AFC and NFC go head-to-head -head at the 1990 Pro Bowl. See the fastest, the strongest, the quickest, and the toughest at the greatest gathering ever of pro football's finest. ESPN's all-pro team of Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann bring you the 1990 NFL Pro Bowl Sunday night at 8 Eastern live on ESPN. Iowa State leading Missouri 74-71. Johnny Orr getting it done for the Cyclones. Coach Johnny Orr looking for the big upset there. The number one Tigers having difficulty, and we've been keeping track of that game along with John Saunders. Now take a look at what BC's decided to do offensively. No luck outside. It outside. Now let's take a look inside. Nice entry by our Diddy to Abel. Good patience. Nice result. I'm told we'll be keeping you abreast of that Missouri game as Brooklyn gets the jam off the inbounds pass. So stay tuned for the waning seconds of that Iowa State-Missouri matchup. Somebody dozed off on the weak side for BC. A no-no on an out-of-bounds play underneath. Edwards. That's a charge. Oh, I beg your pardon. The block. Donnie Gray picks it up. No, you called it right the first time. Oh, you're right. He mentioned white 1-5. He meant to say maroon 1-5. So it does goes back. It does go back to Pittsburgh. Boy, look at that. Boston College, 25%. Yet they're only down by 10. They're fortunate, aren't they? They really are. They're still hanging around. It could be much worse. Pittsburgh, who started quickly with Jason Matthews hitting consecutive three-pointers, has suddenly grown cold. Martin now has gone down low. And two Eagles around him as well. well somebody got a body, kind of tested Martin. Forced that shot to be short. Abel. Good pass over to Reese, but shorter there in a hurry. Arditti. Leo Arditti. A three-pointer, and it's 18 to 11. You know, the thing about shooters, most of them have delicate psyche. If they get themselves going, it could be streaked forever. But when they're struggling, they really struggle. Maybe that'll get Leo going here. Uh, he's really bodying up against Matthews out on the perimeter. Nice work on the glass by Abel. Good box out. They want to get Leo at the top of this zone. Abel, outside to Edwards for three. Just won't fall for Brian Edwards, and they really do expect a great deal from him. One of their better prospects coming in this year. Porter, Abel, claims it for BC. Edwards and Arditti, and Brian will hold it up. And it's Reese, the freshman out of Washington, D.C., in Maine Central Institute that brings the Eagles to within five. The pace of this game sucks that if the Eagles are able to get a couple of shots down, they can put some pressure on the Panther. Porter for three. Boy, Porter really taking some four shots here the last two possessions. Edwards, one-on-one. -on -one. Brooking, Kalpa, who score the basket. Goal tending the call. Jim O'Brien wanted a foul as well here. Here's the transition. Edwards in the lane, a little off balance, but Brooking really makes a poor judgment there as he came across. Jim O'Brien wanted a little push foul, but yeah, Darrell Porter. I think you better take the two and run, yeah. huh? 
Look at that. They've outscored Pitt by 10 in the last 138. So give credit to Jim O'Brien for keeping the confidence up on the road with a team that has not yet won in Big East play. And a team that got off to such a shaky start shooting. They were down 9 nothing at the outset, for those of you just joining us. The Panthers, though, the last couple possessions have settled for some quick threes by Porter. Pat Cavanaugh's in the game. He beats Martin baseline. 20 to 15. 840 and counting in half number one. Yo, Bond! Run, jump, jump, run! Hinton back into the game now for Boston College. Number 44, flashing into the paint. Hinton gets the screen from Reese. He's an inside-outside sort of big man, and Reese picks up the foul over the back. Foul is on number 23, Michael Reese, his third personal. That's three fouls against Reese, and he's the type of jumper that against a team with a front line like Pitt, Jim O'Brien would love to keep on the floor. Oh, certainly would. Gives him an athlete that can go in there and battle with the likes of a shorter and a Martin. There's Jim O'Brien to get a good look at him. He gave David Hinton an earful, wanting David to be more assertive in squaring up to shoot the ball. Number 22 coming into the game now. Corey Jackson, sophomore from Miami for Boston College. Troubles at the line for Pitt. In fact, troubles have been plenty since the first five minutes of this game. And I think the quick shot, and then the Eagles being able to get a couple of shots down in succession have enabled them to close the gap. Leor Diddy. Run down and out of bounds. Pitt will just uh, take control of it when we come back. 7.57 remaining. Pitt looking sluggish, as they oftentimes do in games like these. Pistol Pete Maravich earned his nickname with an NCAA record 44.2 points per game and went on to become an NBA scoring leader with over 15,000 points and a 24.2 average, earning him a place in the Basketball Hall of Fame and making him the greatest legend in basketball history. Pete's last contribution to the sport he loved was a series of four instructional videos that share all the secrets of his incredible success. ESPN is proud to offer this series, Pistol Pete's Homework Basketball. Each 40-minute videotape concentrates on one aspect of your game from ball handling to passing, dribbling, and shooting. You'll get everything from the basics to the moves that made Pistol Pete a legend, including the drills you need to play like a pro. ESPN is offering Pistol Pete's homework basketball for just $29.95 for each tape or $99.95 for the complete set of four. Order now and get Maravich Memories the LSU years free. Call 1-800-544-1000 to put some Pistol Pete in your game. And don't forget to ask for the free ESPN Sports Video Catalog when you call. The sporty Suzuki Sidekick. Hard top and soft top. Tough 4x4s with features to make you comfortable, like fully carpeted interiors, reclining rear seats, and electronically adjustable mirrors. So what could we do to make the Sidekick more attractive? Offer dealer cash incentives. Up to $3,000. But hurry, this deal won't be around for long. Call now for the Suzuki dealer nearest you. Minnesota's number 19, but the Spartans are not far behind. They really are. And that, that's tomorrow night. That'll be followed by North Carolina and Georgia Tech. A great one out of the ACC. And then we have yet another as California takes on Gary Payton and Oregon State. You say he should be the first player taken in the NBA He'll draft. be certainly a lottery pick. He'll be one of the top players. He'll probably be the first guard taken. First guard taken. 20 to 15, you're right. Let's not forget about Derek Coleman. Oh, no. Among others. 20 to 15. Pitt hangs onto it in their backcourt. Moran picked up a quick foul. A near violation there. Matthews up to shorter. That's what these fans want. That kind of athletic ability shown as they lead by seven with over seven minutes remaining in the first half. Nice execution of the oop pass. Chris Paul 
ball movement this transition for Boston College. And there's our Diddy spotting up. Too strong. Shorter outlets to Matthews, who looks to Brooken. That will be goaltending, and it was needless. Hinton will pick it up. That ball would not have fallen. That ball would not have gone in. It was on its way down. It was on its way off the rim. 24-15 hour score here. We'll be back in just a few moments. Now let's get to John Saunders. John? Thanks a lot, Tim Brando. Number one Missouri at Iowa State, a place they've lost four straight, but they are in the front right now after trailing most of the game. Marty Matthews and Gary Thompson. To Tim Brando and Clark Kellogg. Thank you, John. Here it is 28 to 17. Pitt back up by 11. We had a technical foul against Doug Abel after that jam that we had just prior to joining you as you updated us on that Missouri-Iowa State game. And we've got a foul against Shorter. We're at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm Tim Brando along with Clark Kellogg. The Panthers, 7 and 10, coming off that victory against Arizona over the weekend. And Paul Evans on his birthday looking for momentum going into the month of February while Boston College trying to avert a ninth consecutive Big East loss. And another turnover against the Eagles, and the Panthers get it back. Well, the Eagles showing their youth here in this first half. Just aren't very smooth. They've had one fairly decent stretch that was short-lived. Otherwise, they've been a little bumpy. Matt Cavanaugh running the point now. You there you see the turnovers. Look at that Boston College with nine to Pittsburgh's three. It's really amazing when you consider that in the cold shooting to start the game that they're only down by 11. That's exactly right. Again, Pitt, when they got the early big lead, settled for some poor shots and allowed Boston College to kind of claw their way back into it a little bit. And since this run got underway, Pat Cavanaugh, the senior from Grove City, has been running the point. Darrell Porter guilty of taking some of those shots that were not necessarily the ones that Paul Evans would like. Sure, that's a big reason why he's on, not on the floor right now. Nice strong move. Oh, you bet. Right over Corey Beasley. And Beasley picked up the foul as well. And the, foul the Panthers really just too strong Beasley. inside. Here we're going to see Martin locked down with nice position inside. Beasley able to do nothing but stand behind. There's contact. And the finish, he'll have a chance for three. Bobby Martin is a junior just beginning to live up to the potential many times Clark when you're the subject of uh, a recruiting battle the likes of a Bobby Martin it's difficult in making that transition from high school to college isn't it it really is because the expectations are so high I mean it's almost like going to a movie that 10 of your buddies have told you about it's supposed to be great and there's no way that the movie is going to satisfy or meet the expectations and, and much the same happens to a lot of high school players I've been to some movies like that <laughs> I bet you have. Jason Matthews picks up the foul. Jason with the 16th foul against Pittsburgh and Beasley with a jam. That's a quick dunk, Tim. Oh, what a nice pass inside and the quick flush by Corey Beasley. Tell you what, when the Eagles have taken care of the ball, it's been okay in their half court execution. Shorter. Airborne picking up the foul again. Now the Eagles will use up all six of their Big East fouls to, in this ball game down on the post because they're sending Martin and Shorter to the line every trip that they get it on the baseline. Well, again, they're, they're surrounding him inside, but here we take a look at the quick flush. Ooh, he had to get that one down quickly because it looked like Martin got over there just a tad late. But to finish the thought, the Panthers so physical and so strong inside that you're forced to double them up. And heck, BC realizes that the, the Panthers, Shorter and Martin in particular, aren't the best of free throwers. So make them earn them at the line. 32-19. John Saunders standing by in our studios. Missouri and Iowa State underway. We'll keep you abreast of that. And halftime is on the way. We'll have all the scores and highlights at that time. A rejection by Martin. Knocking it away from Corey Jackson that time. And now Kavanaugh penetrates. Kavanaugh! 
The walk-on football type puts it in. And he kind of pulled his way to the hoop that time. He did spend one year in the football program. 34-19 on a turnover. See, the Eagles are not reversing the ball. They need to swing it from that right side to the left side of the floor. The TV timeout comes right on time for O'Brien. shape our future we invite you to learn the technology of tomorrow while you serve your country in the navy of today they're here for 1990 daihatsu's four-door sedan and three-door hatchback from japan Designed out of respect for your sense of style, comfort, and quality, with an understanding of what you look for in workmanship, performance, and handling, and with a very healthy regard for affordability. Daihatsu, one of the most respected names in Japan for over 80 years. Daihatsu. Thank you. And so, Mayor, these swiftly flowing currents create energy, which in turn creates power, which in turn brings electric light to every house in the valley. That's very impressive, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. But the contract calls for bringing bud light to the valley. No wonder, no wonder we're, we're over budget. budget. Bud light won't fill you up, never lets you down. Which in turn keeps the bud light cold. Everything else is just a light. We're in Pittsburgh, but in Ames, Iowa, Iowa State, with a three-point lead over number one. A little over three minutes remaining in that game at the house where they say, here's Johnny. Every time Johnny Orr comes on the floor, he could be pulling off yet another upset. He's had his share during his tenure. He certainly He almost had Clark Kellogg while uh, coaching at Michigan, right? Very close. It was either there or the Buckeyes. 34-19, John Saunders will keep, keep us posted on that game from Ames, Iowa. Time permitting. The Eagles come out now in a 2-3 zone. Looking to change things up a little bit. The Panthers have been able to get the ball inside effectively, so the Eagles looking to maybe force them into perimeter shots. Pat Cavanaugh has undoubtedly changed the complexion of the game since entering after Darrell Porter went to the pine. Done a solid job. And that's what the coach wants when he goes to the bench. Solid contest. Oh, Martin with an acrobatic shot. Bobby, you are special. And lucky. <laughs> he just turns and kind of wings this one. Reggie Pruitt put it in. Pruitt picked up the foul on the reach and the grab. It's hard to believe that you being a post player would say that. That's just the kind of hoop you used to make. No, mine's not. <laughs> no. I call them as they are, Tim. <laughs> you got a few, though, with arms sure, on that oh, elbow. Sure. Let's see if BC will reverse the basketball a little bit. Swing it from side to side. Try to probe inside. They really aren't looking to penetrate much with the dribble. Again, Pitt doing a pretty good job of being active with their hands and feet. Corey Jackson oh, oh, gets like the foul. Boy, active down there, wasn't he? A little jackknife move. And again, BC has been successful in getting the ball in the paint, but you can't just throw it in the paint if you don't move the defense. And the, the ball's moved a few times. Jackson able to get in there. Nice little clutch contact. And the dude. Jackson, Jackson known as a rebounder out of Miami, as we mentioned. Started a couple of games a year ago. Thirty-six, twenty-two, two and a half remaining from Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. We're in the first half. Shorter again with three Eagles all around him. The ball goes inside. Brooklyn is wide open. 
fit showing some good patience here. Martin follows. Yes, and it counts. No luck there. <laughs> Hard work. Perseverance pays. Martin stays right with it. High angle here. Martin with the left hander initially. Doesn't get it, but anytime you take a shot in the bank, you're the best rebounder if it misses. And Martin staying right with it. Able to get the second shot down and draw the foul. Well, as BC tries to take away shorter, and they have, Bobby Martin is cleaning up from the other side, the weak side. He has 15 in the game. That's his average. That's the advantage of having bookend. 39-22. Edwards. Well, Brian Edwards simply cannot find it. He looks good on the shot. I mean, he's shooting the ball. He's floating. He's not getting the result. It will be a fresh, a, a sophomore year that he's sure to remember. And he just hope he can learn from it. I mean, it's probably the last thing he wants to. Oh, no. Brian Shorter with, again, three bodies draped around him. 41-22. Brian only with six. And he had to earn those two. Thank you, Backboard, for being there. This is the largest lead of the game now for Pittsburgh, 41-22. They got out to a 9-0 start. DC clawed to within five. Corey Jackson can't find it. And Bobby Martin gets caught with the push against Reggie Pruitt. The foul is on number 55, Bobby Martin. His first personal. Paul Evans is one of those guys. Donnie Gray made the call there. Evans is one of those guys. He doesn't give as much lip as he does scowl. <laughs> right. And he logged a lot of technicals early in the year. In fact, we were kidding him earlier today. He had nine technicals early in the season. Then suddenly, he's gone without one for about seven games. He's mellowing in his older age. <laughs> Fine staff he's assembled there as well. Mark Coleman, Norm Law, John Sarandria. They give him some grief about the team, too. <laughs> I'm sure they do. 41-24, a 17-point lead. Just over a minute left until halftime. The big news right now, what's going on in Ames, Iowa. John Saunders will update us at halftime from our studios. Good, no look pass to Shorter. Rod Brooken found him on the block. That time the Eagles were in the man-to-man -man defense. Shorter able to get on the block with only one defender. Great look by Brooken. And Shorter knows what to do with it when he catches it in there. DC will hold it. The shot clock is off. 30 seconds on the game clock prior to halftime. Problem for BC, not hitting from deep. They have not hit the outside shot, short of one perimeter J by Lior Arditi. Abel has it knocked away. With three seconds left, he retrieves it, and we're at halftime. The Panthers, sluggish at times, recover, and with the help outside of Pat Kavanaugh, it's a 43-24 lead, but the story is always inside, and Shorter and Martin have it their way, John Thunders. Well, Tim and Clark, Boston College continues to struggle on the road as they look for their first win in the Big East this year. Pitt well on their way to their second. But the big story tonight could be brewing in Ames, Iowa, where the number one team in the nation is in action, and they are down. Missouri, the Tigers ranked number one, are losing by two to Iowa State. 91 to 89. Iowa State has won four straight at home against Missouri, so that might surprise some the score, but not for the folks at Iowa State. Anthony Peeler for Missouri has 40 points already. He's 18 of 18 from the line. There's about a minute and 20 seconds left in the game. We will keep you updated as this one continues. Get back to the Big East. Boston College down big to pit. Let's rejoin Tim Brando and Clark Kellogg. Thank you, John. Here it's a 19-point lead for the Panthers, and there's no question that so far in this basketball game, it's been a nightmare outside for Brian Edwards and company. Jim O'Brien knew he needed perimeter play. He hasn't been getting it. They've got goose egg other than one field goal from the perimeter. Brian Edwards, this indicative of the outside shooting woes for Boston College. There you see it, our Diddy, Edwards and Moran. 
Only one field goal. Edwards is coming from the free throw line. They need more than that. They need a lot more than that. And here you're going to see the shots that they've made, but they're the shots that they've missed from the perimeter, and there are a bunch of them. They did try to go inside, and they were successful for a brief time getting it to Doug Abel. Short-lived success. Nice play here, but far too few. But Bobby Martin and Brian Shorter have done their job. Martin already with 15. He's done an outstanding job. They've dominated action inside the other half of that dynamic duo. Brian Shorter forcing one up inside and getting it down. And the birthday boy is very happy, thank you, with a 19-point lead. By the way, it's also my daughter's birthday, Tiffany Brando, back home. I'm away from her for the first time on her birthday. And happy birthday, sweetheart. Daddy will be home tomorrow. It's a 19-point lead for the Panthers. Over the past decade, all other lines of cars have led Mercedes-Benz in one crucial category, depreciation. Which proves that sometimes great cars finish last. Mercedes-Benz, the resale legend. Million-dollar computers like these weren't built to withstand hard knocks. So when they wanted to move them cross-country, they called United Van Lines. This rare 19th-century painting is too fragile for ordinary transportation, so they called United Van Lines. And when Kevin Anderson's family needed someone to move the things they treasured most, they called United Van Lines. Whether it's a computer, a priceless work of art, or an equally priceless outfielder's glove, the quality shows in every move we make. Get ready for a special Sports Illustrated sneak preview. It's unreal. The man, it's like he's from another planet. You never know what he's going to do. He doesn't even know. He just does it, and you're like, duh. They just saw an amazing video cassette presented by Sports Illustrated, starring the most exciting figure in sports today. Who else? Jordan. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Michael Jordan, come fly with me, 1990. Over 40 minutes of the game's ultimate playmaker. Yours free with your paid subscription to SI. Yes! Call toll-free and get 26 issues of SI at over 45% off the cover price. I didn't realize you could save that much. Including SI's blockbuster baseball preview, the giant 35th anniversary covers issue, and the red hot swimsuit issue. So what's the catch? No catch. You get it all for just three monthly installments of $12.97 each. Even use your credit card. We're golden. Let's do it. Save over 45% and get the Jordan video free. You're going to be giving away a lot of these babies starting right here. Morning, folks. This is Captain Neely. It appears we've got the friendly skies all to ourselves. While well, most people are just getting up, one airline is off to over 200 business centers across the U.S. United. Oh, thanks for flying friendly skies. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Boston College versus Pittsburgh, is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world, and by Hewlett-Packard Personal Computers. There is a better way. Fitzgerald Fieldhouse on the campus of Pittsburgh in Steeltown, a happy place to be. 43-24 at halftime. I'm Tim Brando, along with Clark Kellogg. From the floor, Pittsburgh launching more shots, obviously putting them down more often. On the boards, BC doing the job. The turnover is really a key factor. Big factor. Turnovers keep you from getting the shot, give the offensive team a chance to get a defensive team to get a shot. Three-point shooting. We felt that Boston College had to shoot the three-pointer but they need to make a little more than one of ten in this second half. Darrell Porter, who was scoreless in the first half and really had a few bad decisions, does start half number two. One of the subtle changes made by Evans was getting Kavanaugh into the game. He certainly settled Pitt's offense down. Got the ball inside for the right people at the right time. Shorter misses. And here comes Lior Arditi. Oh, good hang time, but it won't drop. Nice steal by the Israeli star. Over to Abel. Arditi initially tried to draw a foul. That forced him to miss the initial layup. Stayed with it, though, on the steal. And able to get a quick hoop. Deep, deep. DC looking. 
to get off to a quick start here in the second half. Shorter. Only one man with him that time. And he took him down to the blocks. He has 10, does Brian. And that's with a number of Eagles around him every time he's touched the ball. 45, 26. Hinton to Abel. Counted in the foul against Martin. Oh, nice interior passing that time by the Eagle. If Doug Abel were a few inches taller, he could be a much better player in this league. A little nice interior pass here from David Hinton to Abel. Abel breaks, gets himself close to Bobby Martin. Anytime you go inside against the shot blocker, you want to zap that space between you and the shot blocker. Go body to body and get it up on the glass. Doug's really at that in-between height, isn't he? He's a tweener. Plays much taller than he, he really, really does. He's got the live leg, good rise off the floor. But there's no substitute for three or four extra inches. 45 to 29. Darrell Porter, slashing type of guard. Now Matthews cuts inside. Looks like an offensive foul. Against Matthews. So Jason picks it up. He got off to a quick start, hitting three consecutive three-pointers. Now he has two fouls. Got 12 points in that first half. Good rotation, though, that time by David Hinton to draw the foul. R. Diddy for three. Oh, he is so upset. That one was online, just a little strong. Oh, shorter off the alley-oop. Nice feed from Porter. The Panthers in the 2-3 zone. Hinton on the blocks. It won't fall. David Hinton is the player they need more from. And they get some from him defensively. Abel back out to our Diddy. Same spot, same result. And the follow by Reese. Michael Reese, the freshman from Washington, D.C., makes it a 14-point game. D.C. has outscored Pitt by five in the first two and a half minutes. Boy, a nice try by our Diddy. Almost came up with the clean steal. The Eagles playing with a little more life here to start this second half. Jim O'Brien probably had a lot to say about that first half performance. And it appears that our Diddy is the ignite man for this team. You see, he's one for seven from the floor, but defensively he creates things. He plays with tenacity, appears unhappy at times. He's the kind of guy that could become a leader for the Eagles. Where's, where's his emotion on his uniform? One for seven, one for seven, by the way, excuse me, from three-point range. And, of course, that's indicative of the type of night DC's had as a team. Donnie Gray picks up the foul. Hinton picks up the foul. That's number three on David Hinton. I know you're high on Hinton, and you'd like to see more from him offensively. Well, I'd like to just see him be more assertive. Again, you can't rush the maturity process. He's a freshman finding his way along in Big East Conference play. Displays a nice touch and a good feel for the game. Ryan Edwards driving and picking up the foul. Darrell Porter picks it up. Nice to see Brian Edwards look to the bench after that drive for some encouragement and found it in his teammates and the coaching staff. They like that penetration. Again, another little way to try to lift the confidence of young players that are struggling. Brian Edwards really could be an emerging star out of Rochester, Mass. Brian Edwards in the line. Set the Massachusetts high school scoring record. 2,563, and that's a state that's produced some outstanding scores. He's got the ability. He's their best player with the ball, but again, struggling without having a lead guard, a guy that can set him up effectively. Morning star! BC did not get back, and Pitt made them pay. 47-33. Now the crowd picks up. Skip pass to Reese. Hinton, great pass to Abel. Well, I tell you what, the Eagles really doing a nice job. Now they're patient. They aren't turning the ball over, but they're getting good execution in the half court. 11 for Doug Abel. 47-35. BC has cut into that lead by seven points in the first three and a half minutes. 
quarter just so tough down low. I think the foul probably on our Diddy coming over from the weak side. Foul is on number 14, Leor Arditti. His second first goal. It's two on our Diddy. He also has a technical. Watch this pass. This is beautiful basketball here. Good footwork, though. Hinton catches the ball with his back to the basket, then turns and squares up and finds an open teammate. Jim O'Brien constantly encouraging a player that I think many times gets down on himself and it hurts his play. Exactly. You have to play with emotion, but again, you have to find that happy medium, that balance, so that your emotions don't force you into poor play or lead you into poor play. 48 to 35. Arditti, good coaching, right? 48-38, that's two threes for Arditti. He has both that Boston College has logged tonight. And a 19-point lead at halftime has been nearly cut in half. And the time off the clock, only four minutes, so Jim O'Brien has to be pleased with where his club is at this stage. Martin flashing outside. Shorter keeping it alive. Out of bounds, it belongs to Pitt. Oh, the Eagles are soaring in the second half. Down by 10. Sunny skies and zero chance of rain through Sunday. Good news. There's no snow on our forecast today. Mercedes-Benz introduces Formatic. Outwitting the weather and the road with the most advanced all-wheel drive system ever put in a car. Formatic. It may just obsolete other all-wheel drive systems. Not to mention weather forecasts. You've been designing the sales with a personal computer. Right. But you've got Joanna here doing the bookkeeping and billing with an old adding machine. Is that correct? That's correct. Well, sounds like you could use the extra power of the Hewlett-Packard mm -hmm. Vectra PC here. You could design your sales faster, and Joanna could do the bookkeeping and billing on there, too. Heck, if you had a Hewlett-Packard, you'd probably both be out sailing right now. That's right. Solve all our problems. You look Packard PCs. Bang. Put you right in the 20th century. One blast. Exciting, huh? There is a better way. Hewlett Packard. Life's full of simple pleasures, like the comfort of Levi's jeans, or a hedge forgotten. As we turn back the clock to January 7th of 89, Dana Barros lit up the Pitt Panthers. 43 points, a Big East record nine three-pointers. He led the Eagles to a 95-83 victory for head coach Jim O'Brien, and Barros ended his BC career as the all-time scoring leader. He had in all 2,342 points. Dana may also be the record holder for ESPN flashbacks in his first year as a pro. <laughs> three BC games, three Dana Barrows flashbacks. He meant an awful lot to this club oh, in the years that he played here. Darren Morningstar off the baseline gives Pitt a 12-point lead. You're just with us for the first time, a 19-point halftime lead, shaved to 10 with 15.37 remaining in the second half, and Pittsburgh now back up by 12. Matthews, oh, what a nice button hook move on the baseline. Doug Abel has it knocked away by Shorter. It's controlled to Boston College. The Eagles have gone to some full court pressure. They've been able to do that because they've been able to score a little bit more here in the second half, and that's allowed them to set up the full court scrambling, pressing defense. Reese. Hinton keeping it alive for Abel. Reese follows. Boy, he's been active. He's been a, he's been a pogo stick on the offensive glass. Now some pressure from Boston College. 50 to 40. Five minutes gone in half number two. Shorter. Over Hinton. Yes. And the foul against Hinton. Boy, that's a nice look. Excellent bounce pass from the top of the key area into the low post. 
Nice shot here from the end zone. Great look off by Porter, Darrell Porter inside the shorter. Shorter only about 6'6", but does such a good job of sitting down, using his lower body to get that good post position. And he's got hands like magnets down there. He usually catches everything in his vicinity. Tough kid, born into poverty, has never gotten something for nothing. Had a career high 37 against Oklahoma last year. He has fought hard to get where he is today. Well, you can never discount your experiences and your background. They have a way of shaping your attitudes and efforts. Rod Brooking into the game, picking up a rebound. Shorter again. Losing this one off his hip. Boy, how he got out on the break, though. Mm -hmm. Illusions of grandeur call it, causing that turnover. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was looking forward to the highlight film flush. Willie Foley back into the game, number 50. Boy, Abel again. Picks up the offensive foul this time. Jim O'Brien not happy. And Brian Shorter right there in position. Well, I tell you what, I'm impressed with the way the Eagles are finding those gaps and seams against the zone. Really doing a nice job with their interior pass. Foley with a body on Shorter, and he picks up the foul. Little thumping and bumping inside. 6'9", junior out of Albany, New York, Willie Foley has played well the last couple of games. And this is, yeah, that's... A little thumping and bumping here. A little knee action by Foley. Shorter does such a good job, though, at fighting for that territory. Matthews over Arditti. Abel skies for the rebound, and Edwards looks long. Reese penetrates. Jason Matthews in transition. Brooke in for three. Look out. Rod could get hot. And those numbers aren't for artistic impression. 56-40. The lead back to 16. Arditti. What a quick, long jumper that doesn't fall. Gets the transition game going, doesn't it? it really ignites it. Shorter! Leor Arditti showed the emotion there. You work so hard to cut it to 10, miss a couple of perimeter shots, and you're back down by 18. There are a hundred reasons to own a Mercedes-Benz. For John and me, it keeps coming down to just two. For reaching out, for reaching high, for pushing hard each time you try, for taking time, for taking pride, for showing what you got inside. For you, Beechwood Age for the taste so crisp, so clean, so refreshing. It's the king of beers. Boston College had cut a 19-point deficit to 10, but here's a quick shot by Leo Arditti, which ignites the Panther break. Brooking to Porter, to Shorter. Conversion. Here's Rod Brookin. Nice ball movement. Square up. Three-pointer. And the improvement in three-point range so big in Big East play for the Panthers. At 42% mark that they're shooting this year, as you can see, leads the conference. 
Look out, everyone else remaining on that February Big East schedule. The Panthers could be right on time as the March for March gets underway. Drop doors. I'm dropping. Art Diddy for three. Boy, if Lee Orr could hit a couple of those in succession, he's hit three of them, but they've been about five to six minutes apart. Right, they've been spread out. Well spread out. I think that was a call of play from the Boston College bench to move the ball and get our kid at three-pointer. There's Jim O'Brien and Frank Dowd. Ted Kelly, Joe Gallagher also on that staff. They do an outstanding Joe, job. Joe Gallagher to Jim O'Brien's left. Call a glimpse up there. The Eagles over the limit. The foul, by the way, was picked up by Jackson. Corey Jackson, number 22. Shorter gets the offensive board. And he walked. And you can credit that turnover to the problems by the BC defense collapsing on him. They closed him in. I think they called him for the three second violation. Yeah, they may have. You're right. Bobby Ray Smith, number 11 now, and at the point position, operating for Boston College. Corey Jackson, too strong off the window, followed by Corey. He's been impressive in the minutes he's been on the floor. 58-45, shorter to Brooklyn. Oh, the trail man with a nice assist. You know, when you're scrambling, trying to get back into a game, and you're scrambling all over the place, you lose track of your men easier. And that time, the Panthers able to take advantage of that scrambling defense. 60 to 45. Nice move inside. And Reggie Pruitt, the team captain, gets into the scoring column. Now the pressure picks up. Out of bounds, Darrell Porter. BC gets it back. Paul Evans does not like what he sees. And for all the problems Boston College has had, credit Jim O'Brien now getting the most out of what he has down 13. Listen, listen carefully. This man is using an amazing electronic breakthrough that lets him hear a pin drop across the room. It's the Whisper 2000. Gives you the astonishing experience of super hearing. No more embarrassing. Make no doubt, Jim O'Brien, the coach, is a true eagle. As a freshman playing for Bob Cousy, then on to the ABA with the Pittsburgh Condors. He's come home, and then later with the Kentucky Colonels in Bachman-Turner overdrive days, 71 <laughs> to 73 with a mustache. Jim O'Brien, and doing a pretty good job right now. He really is. He changed defenses, went to the pressure defense, and forced the Panthers to call a timeout. And really doing a good job with what he has. You know, you can't get um, Olive from a big tree. Mm -hmm. You've got to play the hand you're dealt. So far, Jim playing it pretty well here. Those pictures from the Buffalo Springfield era to BPO, I'm told. 60-47. <laughs> Corey Jackson. Boy, he's been impressive. He's been a spark. He had five Corey at Jackson. the half, and he's put together a couple of field goals, so he's moving close to double digits in the full court heat. 60-49. So after an 8 nothing run by Pitt, an 8 nothing run for BC. Oh, Brian Shorter. Bobby Martin smiles and say, says to him, boy, that was pretty good. The bookend to bookend oh, smiling over this one. Take a look at this. Here's nice penetration by Darrell Porter. Nice little feed. And then this shot, he's almost on the floor and somehow grunts it up and down. And Bobby Martin knows the feeling of a little... Luck on a tough shot. Oh, Every time BC makes a mini run, either Shorter or Martin muscle up a three, and it quickly takes them out of it. 63-49, the lead back to 14 for Pittsburgh. Very deflating when your team trying to come back. Arditti. Now he's hit two in a row from that spot. 63-52. You know, you have to like the fact that he's still looking at the hoop with confidence. Handle the pressure in short order. Martin picks up the block, but not the hoop. Willie Foley on the hardwood picks up the foul. Number, foul 50. Not number 50, Willie Foley, his third personal. The teaching doesn't stop. That, that's a great shot right there, and you can see the anguish from our Diddy. A youngster having to make many transitions 
both on the floor and off the floor, coming over from the Israeli army and, and getting into a, a Catholic school as an Israeli. That in itself is quite a contrast. <laughs> That's right. Hey, go, That's a heck go. of an adjustment. That's a book. But, but you like his eagerness, though. Yeah, you bet. And his enthusiasm. You bet. And his coachability. I mean, you can see that he's taking in every bit of instruction from Jim O'Brien. And like most European players that you might see at any time, he shoots well from the perimeter. And the Dove Hennevel does that as well as pass. They were, by the way, teammates at times on the Israeli Army team. His compadre, the Dove, the Dove will also pick your pocket. You bet. Arditi again. Too strong on the penetration and shorter control. Brook into Martin. Well, that's just heads up basketball by Rod Brookin, recognizing he doesn't have a chance to come down with it for a good shot. Little touch pass. I really like like Pittsburgh as a running team. It was a good clean outlet, shorter to Porter, to Brookin, touch pass to Martin, and he's hammered and he'll get to the line. But the ball doesn't touch the floor there. Poor Chris, clean pass. Back to 15 now for Pittsburgh. Ten and a half remaining from Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Bobby Martin now has 19 points. The Eagles kind of hanging in the neighborhood. They just can't get to the right house. Bobby Ray Smith loses it. And now picks up the foul in frustration against Jason Matthew. Bobby Ray, a better ball handler. He is a senior out of Rose Hill, North Carolina. But his de he's deficient on the defensive end, and that time, after the mistake, he had yet another mistake. And he's been bothered by a calf pull as well. They didn't know if he was actually going to play at all tonight. Brian Edwards will come back into the game now. Brian Edwards and Smith will check out. But the encouragement doesn't stop. Jim O'Brien is trying every possible avenue any coach could try in Big E's play. He's got the, the, the big kid, Curly, coming in, and he has Huckabee, the, the guard out of Bristol, Connecticut, the ESPN's home base next year. Reason for some optimism in 1991, and one of the reasons I think his demeanor, although he's winless in Big East play, is still still with him. He's, oh, still, sure. he's still in pre a pretty good mood for a guy that has not won a Big East game in the month of January. Even though college sports, pro sports, is a here and now type of business, you still like to look ahead, especially when you have such a young team. And these guys, and these kids are going to develop and mature and gain experience. It should be invaluable as they add better, stronger players. Darrell Porter picked up the foul. By the way, my colleague Clark Kellogg took some time at the coach's request to speak to the Boston College Eagles today at their shoot around. Most eloquent speech. Well, thank you, Tim. Some of your eloquence rubs <laughs> off on occasion. What? <laughs> 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 if you're a former player, I know how tough it is when you're not winning. Mm -hmm. You're struggling. It's hard to see improvement, to see progress. When, they, when it's not showing up in the wind column. See the story. We're halfway done in half number two, and it's a 15-point Pittsburgh lead. Arditi on the floor never stops fighting, does he? Matthews. And for all this trouble and effort, Jim O'Brien's going to get a team, and Arditi, after all that scratching and pulling, Brooklyn knocks down the three. So sometimes it just doesn't quite go. I believe the, he's arguing that there should have been a travel here. Now, take a look. Uh, he, he, close, yeah. very close. Actually, Matthews knocked down the three-pointer, not Brooklyn. And the technical on Jim O'Brien. I think he had a point. Well, he certainly had a valid point. I think that's the culmination of some conversation that Donnie Gray 
and Jim O'Brien have had throughout the course of this evening? Well, there have been two technicals called on BC players throughout the course of the game. One, as we documented early on in the telecast, was uh, a, perhaps a no-call situation that was called, and it turned out to be a tee, and O'Brien did not forget that. Shorter. And with a 20-point lead, it's out of bounds. Control to Pittsburgh. Well, there we may have had a foul. We did. Hinton picked it up. Down on the blocks, David Hinton. The lead is back to 20. It was 19 at halftime. Cut to 10, four minutes deep into this half. And Jim O'Brien is beginning to steam up a bit. Walter Lundy will now come into the game now. As Paul Evans and staff look on. This is a critical time for Pittsburgh. They need this victory, as we mentioned, and should they get it, and then upset a few people on the road in the Big East, and they're very capable of it, they could be a story in the month of February. Well, again, they've got a high-octane offense. I mean, you look at Shorter, Martin, Matthews, Brooken, Darrell Porter capable of solid offensive game. So they can score. I think the key for Pittsburgh is to be able to stop people consistently. While Arizona may be a bit of an enigma this year under Lute Olson, just ask him about the Pittsburgh talent offensively. 76-54. Brooken keeping it alive. Oh, a heavyweight with a heavyweight play. <laughs> and it's going good. It's going good. Excellent presence of mind, though, for Brooklyn to save that ball and get it towards his back. Hinton wipes the crowd. That jam still ignites the crowd, although Hinton did respond on the other end. Brooklyn they wanted it all that time. Martin! The Panthers are going for the jugular. It got the jugular. Brooker trying to flush on two eagles, doesn't get it. Martin on the weak side glass. Another circus shot. We've seen about three of those. This is just a great play by Brook, and This is the possession before. Saved it right into the hands of Shorter. Shorter's pretty excited about that one. Well, he really runs the floor well. Brian Shorter really gets out and runs the lanes very well. 21 points for Martin. A regular convenience score from the floor. 7 of 11. 80 to 56. And you see Willie Foley coming back into the game. Number 50 for Boston College. 81-56. Game's largest lead. Eight and a half remaining. Jackson follows his own shot. Score the basket. Martin inside the cylinder, knocking it away. And Michael Reese will come into the game. Well, if BC has another run in them after all of this, then they're showing us some heart. You know, I really think you've only got a few runs in you when you're a team that's playing on the backside of a lead. Two or three good runs are usually usually one or two solid runs are about all you're going to be able to muster. Yeah. And when you're a young team still struggling for consistency, one good run is usually about the limit. Foley picks up the foul on Shorter. And that last technical foul against O'Brien seemed to almost slam the door, didn't it? Yeah, it really did. And again, frustration sets in, and clearly some of his arguments were valid. As we get a look at Jim O'Brien. Came to Boston College from St. Bonaventure where he had been successful. 12 and 17 a year ago in this league with Dana Barros literally carrying this team on his on its back. But when you've got one explosive offensive player, especially if that player is, a, is the type of player that can get his own shot, you've got a chance in just about every game. And that's one of the things that the Eagles lack now. One of the reasons why two impact players in college basketball can literally make a program. Make a tremendous difference. Eight. And then so often that can be the platform 
to getting more impact players. Walter Lundy. And it's 83 to 60. Walter Lundy. We have to give the Panthers credit. As you said earlier, Tim, they've been known to come out lethargically, especially on the heels of a, of a win, on the heels of a win against a, a ranked opponent and come into a game with a team they're supposed to handle and, and be a little lackadaisical. Rod Brookings had a far better second half. That's helped. And Darrell Porter certainly helped outside, and there's another foul inside as the ball is entered into the shorter. And Foley picks up yet another foul. And speaking of that, the, the, the Pittsburgh team last year surprising so many teams with those big victories, and yet if you want to know about a coach that really didn't want to see a certain team, as the fly the line eyes Lou Henson a year ago had Pitt beaten Ball State in the opening round, they would have been a true threat to the line eyes. Yet Ball State, the type of team that would get Pitt fits. Exactly. It's an interesting paradox, but nonetheless true. Not to take anything away from Majerus, he had the most wins than any other team last year, and Ball State deserved that victory. But again, that's a team that Pitt knew very little about. And there was a certain lack of respect for them. And Paul Evans would tell you that. Motivating your team for a, an opponent like that sometimes difficult, and particularly for the Panthers. Well, that's when you earn your money and earn your stripes as a coach when you can find the right buttons to push when your team thinks they're going to have an easy time of it. Brooklyn, fouled by Jackson. A couple of players you would have expected to hear more from, obviously for Pittsburgh this year, Sean Miller. The cast is still on. He's expecting that it may be taken off by this coming Tuesday. And there have been a lot of rumors circulating through the Pittsburgh area simply because that cast has remained on that foot. Well, once it comes off, you won't really be able to know what the prognosis is until he's actually able to start some rehabilitation to start putting some pressure on that foot and to see how it responds to the stress of weight-bearing activity. And Sean's going to have um, a lot of work on his hands. He told us he's put on a little weight yeah, during the time of inactivity. Yeah, he can't wait for the rehab <laughs> because he's feeling that extra poundage. You're right. Well, he certainly bulked up his arms moving around on those crutches. Yeah, he came out today for the shoot-around in his... Uh, in his sweat gear, and you could tell, I believe he had been pumping some iron. Oh, really? Pumping his own weight, that's, that's iron in itself. Oh, we got a slap now. We got Foley and Martin going at it up at the top of your screen. Martin running away from Willie Foley now. There should be a technical call. It could get worse, too. Foley didn't appreciate it at all. You, even though your team is struggling, you're frustrated, you can't afford to back down. If you're talking about gaining respect, you don't need to be dirty or flagrant, but certainly you can't afford to back down. It's been going on for some time between the post players, both Shorter and Martin, and Coley since he's come into the game. And let's face it, they've had a feast in the last seven minutes down low. Exactly. It's tough for that youngster to take. Sure, it's tough to take. He's been banging them, trying to push them out of their area in the low post. To no avail. Right side of your screen. Here it is. Oh, a little wrap. Yeah. A little takedown. And the retaliation always is, is what was seen. Always seen that second. That was followed by a slap of the face by Martin against Foley, and then Bobby quickly ran to the other side of the court. That's four technical fouls called against Boston College in this game. Three against players, one against Jim O'Brien. And now our hope is that it settles down. 87-63, 6.24 remaining. Porter. Oh, to Martin. 
What an entry pass. Well, I don't know what the numbers are for Darrell Porter in terms of assists, but he's closing in on that single season assist record. And here's the nice little jump bounce pass. Leaves his feet, look away. Beautiful bounce pass to Martin, who does what he's been doing all night, finishing inside. That's 10 for Porter tonight, 10 assists. That's 145 for the year for Durrell. Dwayne Wallace in the 81-82 season at 187, and Darrell Porter, not even the true point guard, waiting for Sean Miller, could break the record that Sean would so desperately like to have. And you see the front court scoring. That's a mismatch. All pit. Jackson to Reese. 90 to 65 with under six minutes remaining. As has been the case all year for the Eagles, they can't quite put together sustained basketball. Good basketball over sustained period. And that's a sign of youth and inexperience. Darren Morningstar bodies up and knocks it home. 92-65. And those guys in the white uniforms also have a little bit to do with how shaky the Eagles have been most of the evening. Got too strong. Boy! <laughs> Not quite Rod. Rod wanted to play ping pong with it. Or tether ball. <laughs> but it is a turnover. Rod Brooken now comes out of the game to a nice ovation. And Pat Cavanaugh comes in. Brian Shorter already on the pine. And you have to wonder when others may enter this game. <laughs> Darrell Porter had visions uh, of something Porter exciting third, at the other five. end. Team foul number five. We talk about the, the players from Pittsburgh that are logging some playing time now. You can't push Brian any more Shorter. buttons if you're Jim O'Brien. Well, maybe just one. Twelve of the 13 that dressed have played in tonight's game. And now Bobby Martin comes out. Morningstar picks up the foul against Foley away from the ball. Foul on number 33, Darren Morningstar, his fourth personal. There are the sad faces that tell the story. A long ranger for Walter Lundy. He has a couple of three pointers tonight. 92 68. Lundy, a good looking shooter. Out of Claxton, Georgia, in Claxton High School. Jason Matthews counters for Pittsburgh. <laughs> he doesn't look too bad when he strokes it either. Bobby Moran, number 30, back into the game along with Lundy and off the pick. Lundy lets it loose. Moran inside to Reese, knocked away by Morningstar. You know, as you watch this Pittsburgh team tonight, they've got a toughie this weekend. And then next week, against Georgetown, that could be a, that could be a wild one at Lando. Could be an interesting game. There's a little bad blood between those teams, and Pittsburgh's the type of team that physically can give Georgetown some problems. Martin and Shorter, very effective inside. And Darrell Porter and Jason Matthews and Brooklyn's along the perimeter, so it should be an interesting battle. One of those matchups where the six foul limit helps Pittsburgh in this instance. And there's another foul. Corey Jackson and or Moran picked it up. It was Corey Jackson. But the six foul limit something that's really being talked about a great deal now in Big East and the Southeastern Conference. I think it's extending sometimes the length of games, but at many times it's giving a team like Pittsburgh that only goes seven deep a better opportunity against a team like Georgetown and John Thompson's system. Well, you can state a lot of arguments. I think the one thing it does, it gives the better players an opportunity to stay on the floor longer. And as a fan, you have to like that. You get a chance to see guys on the floor. If you're a cheer, if you're cheering for the underdog, then 
clearly you, you have some qualms with it. They're cheering for Jason Matthews, who's come out of the game. There he is. Boy, a nice performance for Jason. He hit the three-pointers that were necessary, and that's what they expect from him. And Darren Morningstar, 55% from the strike, hits two in a row. It's coming up big for the birthday boy. At 1,184,880 miles. Welcome back to Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, 97-68 Pittsburgh with the lead over Boston College, 357 remaining, ACC Big East Wednesday winding down. I'm Tim Brando along with Clark Kellogg. Eric Layton, number 24 in white, is coming to the game for Jason Matthews. Corey Jackson gets help from Reese, and Darrell Porter clears it at Kavanaugh. Operating at the point now, number 12 for Pittsburgh. See, the crowd wants Layton to shoot it. Well, you Mike better Clinton wait until he gets a little closer and a little more open. Elbow against Shorter, who yeah, has now come back into the game. See, he really keeps his hands up a little too high sometimes and gets them away from his body, and he's vulnerable to that offensive foul call because he starts acting like a windshield wiper with his arm, just wiping people out of the way. Going to the line now, number 55. Now he's explaining, to, he's, explaining, <laughs> he's explaining to the official. He knows he was guilty, though. He's got a nice smile on his face. And you want to get those arms up, but you, you don't want to get them too far out. Because then you just look like you're committing a foul. With all of the talk of players going out early now to the NBA with the escalating prices, you get the feeling that Brian Shorter is one of those guys that many people would be talking about, yet they aren't. He likes it here, and I, I suspect he'll be here for a senior year and, and feels like he's got uh, some growth yet ahead at the intercollegiate level. Oh, there's no question about it. Because he's only 6'6", his breed at the next level, a dying breed, 6'6", post-up play. Oh, and right on cue, he gets the hoop. And the foul as well. But at this level, it's free very, very much a factor in the line. Here he is, working inside. He's just so aggressive and tenacious. Doesn't give up on the ball at all. Shorter has 28, and listen to the ovation for Brian. Brian Shorter has been walking tall tonight. Boy, he's really a force in the paint area. 28, well above the season average. Probably got a bushel basket full of boards as well. Gilbert Johnson is coming to the game for him, number 42. Layton's got it. He's in the box score with a rebound. 100 to 70 with 240 and counting. Layton. Remember that. Reese. You can tell why Michael Reese is a player that many people see with a great deal of potential. Yeah, you can see it there. He's going to bloom one of these days and, and be a factor. He's got all the tools. Johnson baseline. Everybody in the scoring column. For the Panthers, everyone that's played is in the column. Reese scored the basket, goaltending against Johnson. And now Brush and Ziegler to come in. Porter and Morningstar lead. And the crowd responds. Back-to-back -back game. The Panthers match the century mark or beyond. Brian Brush. Out of Sharpsville, PA, number 15. And Travis Ziegler, number 23. 
There's Ziegler. There he is, and he picks up the foul. And he'll get to the line. Foul is on number 22, Corey Jackson. Ziegler in Pittsburgh. From basketball country, Louisville, Kentucky. John Rask will come into the game, and the storyline to this game, very simple. Arditi, Edwards, and Moran, they needed points. Arditi gave them three threes, but that was it. That really was. Brian Edwards really never got himself going offensively, only four points. He's one of their leading scorers, and you just can't have your leading scorers go AWOL. 106-74. Foul against Brush. As Corey Jackson took him down to the baseline. Foul is on number 15, Brian Brush. He's been a pleasant surprise tonight, Corey Jackson. In limited playing time, he's managed double digits as we get a glance at the BC bench, Doug Abel there. The tireless worker. Always battles, but sometimes it's not enough. As a senior next season. He could be the one that most benefits from the Curleys and company coming into the BC program because Boston College has a collection of players that could get better with other people that are better around them. Excellent point. 106-76. Johnson. The Rask, former punter for the football team. John Rask. Ziegler keeping it alive. Johnson! Again! Boy, it's Warren. They're letting him go. And a foul. <laughs> <laughs> the officials swallowed their whistles momentarily. They're going to let him get after it inside. Well, when you're on the bench, you better be persistent when you get in. <laughs> oh, you never have to worry about that. Those guys that don't get a lot of playing time, when they get out there, they take full advantage of the opportunity. Johnson has seen appreciable playing time in his past. He's had chronic knee problems. And we have some chronic basketball fans that can't wait for Big Monday. Look at that. Purdue and Northwestern, the zoo crew is ready. And then, of course, Cal Santa Barbara and Santa Clara. And Rath follows. A little salt in the wound for the BC Eagles when the guys off the bench get into the party. And live it up a little bit. Seton Hall in Syracuse, the first half of Big Monday from the Big East next year. Seton Hall, a bit of an enigma. At the end of December, coming into January, they had lost a close game in Vegas to Michigan. All looked well for PJ, but it's been tough for him offensively lately. Well, they've had a hit one of those air pockets. Inconsistency along the front line and even in the backcourt at the point guard spot a little bit. Darrell Michaels gets his first two for Boston College. Walter Lundy still working hard against Layton. Lundy baseline. Walter Lundy has played well since coming into this game. He has 17 on the night as the clock ticks down. Out of bounds, control to Pittsburgh. You'll have a good one next week in that Pitt Georgetown game. Looking forward to it. I've got these guys again on Saturday against Villanova, the Panthers. I think we'll get to the line again. Remember these successive victories in the Big East this year. Connecticut winning both against Syracuse and then later Georgetown. And then when you take a look at, at Pittsburgh, late in February. Remember that victory against Arizona, though, non-conference, and then proving to people that they would not have the same types of problems they had a year ago by thoroughly dominating BC before they head into that pivotal month of February. At the top of the league, and even at the lower division, combinations of victories many times mean a great deal. That's exactly right. Another good point, Timmy B. I've tried. <laughs> it's over. 
Paul Evans on his birthday comes away with the whole cake. 110 to 80, our final score for Clark Kellogg. I'm Jim Brando saying so long from Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. ACC Big East Wednesday is history, guys. Well, Tim and Clark, it was never in doubt for the Pitt Panthers, as you said, on Paul.